Uh, Jeffrey, what excited you about being um, in Rampage? I mean, it must be the largest production, at least in scale, that you've ever been in. Right? Yeah, I mean, after, you know, Watchmen was pretty big, but um, I think in seeing this movie and seeing kind of the scale and the magnitude and the monsters of it all, um, this probably is the biggest thing I've ever been a part of. But um, what attracted to me, what attracted, uh, I guess, the, me to the project initially was, I mean, who doesn't want to do a monster movie at least once in your life? Uh, you know, I grew up, I remember sitting in the living room floor uh, watching a little black and white TV and seeing King Kong and Godzilla come to life. Uh, and, you know, when I became an actor, you always... For me, it was westerns, and let's do a monster movie. Um, and I've been lucky enough to do a couple westerns, and 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 then this opportunity to do a monster movie. But not only a monster movie, but to work with Dwayne Johnson, um, maybe the the best in the world right now at these type of films, these blockbuster tentpole type things. Um, uh, it was an easy thing for me to be attracted to, and then I just I loved this character. Um, in in reading the script, I thought that Agent Russell kind of jumped off the page, and I had a couple conversations with Brad Payton, our director, who I fell in love with as well, and I just knew that we could make Agent Russell kind of a really special character that that the audience was going to respond to, and and I and I think we've been able to do that. Oh, you definitely have, and I love how he's kind of defined also by his wardrobe. I mean, he's a cool guy. Yeah, yeah. I, I think well, I think that was that's a lot of uh, that's Mr. Payton, Brad Payton. Uh, I remember in our first discussions, he had a very kind of specific visual idea of of what we were going to see in in the introduction to Harvey. Russell and it was coming down that plane and it starts on his cowboy boots and pans up and by the time you get to his waist and you see that belt buckle and his gun it kind of informs the audience immediately of the kind of guy this is probably going to be um, and hopefully we throw some hitches in there somewhere but I think the wardrobe is very specific to who this guy is yeah. He also has a lot of swagger and sense of humor that cockiness must have been fun to play with. Yeah it was fun. Um, and I think the only way that he works, uh, you know, if you're going to go toe to toe with someone as intimidating uh, and formidable as as Dwayne Johnson, you better bring some swagger and some confidence. And uh, I, I love that in in this character. Um, and yeah, I had to turn it on for sure. Um, and it's kind of how he carries himself. He is generally, he, it's almost as if Russell knows more than anyone else. You know, uh, it's that kind of confidence that you're playing. Because um, obviously I'm not going to uh, beat up The Rock uh, physically. He, he's a little bit bigger than I am. But if I can bring a confidence that can put him on his heels, which is, I think, what, what Agent Russell does, then, I, then, I, then it, it evens the playing field out a little bit. Following up on what you're saying, um, Dwayne's character and, and, and Russell, they don't get off on the right foot. Right. What are their issues, and how do they kind of learn to get over them? Well, um, there, I think they're, they're, the, the issues are, I mean, we're, we're thrown obviously into this crazy world that's almost uh, a, 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 a ridiculous premise, seemingly. Uh, three giant monsters on the loose, um, and... I am a character who states right off the bat that I am there to clean up the mess that, that other people make. Uh, and, and I put uh, Dwayne's character in that category of a person that has made a mess and I'm going to clean it up. Um, he is kind of on the side of his best friend George um, and I think where they kind of start finding common ground is when I think Russell turns to him after that introduction, which is quite long, um, and says, I genuinely feel for your friend, um, that moment on the plane. And then he kind of walks off, and then the craziness really starts. I think that line propels Dwayne to help out Agent Russell long enough for this movie to continue with at least Agent Russell in it. You know, um, kind of saves my ass in that plane, and uh, the movie carries on from there with with me helping 
Dwayne and Naomi's characters kind of figure out what's going on. But um, thank God they have something in common. And I think that is uh, their love of animals to start with, certainly. They also have in common that they have a sense of humor. There's some yes. banter there. Yeah, yeah. That, and that's uh, a lot of that. We're very lucky that we had uh, kind of um, an instant chemistry, uh, the, the two of us, myself and Dwayne. And I think that shows on the screen. Um, the fact that we liked each other helps. Um, and so we were able to, you know, w if you're working with someone that you like, and uh, that shows. And I think that that chemistry is palpable um, and it kind of jumps off the screen and it makes the, the banter between the two, the, the sense of humor and the, the wisecracking, the smart ass of it, if you will, it, it makes it work. You worked with many great actors, but you mentioned before that no one liked Dwayne for a role like this. No, you know, I don't. I, this is. I think he owns this kind of world. I, this, this, this big kind of uh, these big movies. Uh, I don't know who carries them better than he does. Um, Dwayne is very special in the fact that you've got a leading man. Um, the size and stature that he is 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 bar none. There's no one that can match that. But I think the most special thing about him, and I was telling him this yesterday in an interview that I did with him, is the fact that he can make fun of himself and he's kind of self-deprecating and it makes him, uh, it makes the audience really embrace him. You know, he, here's a guy that is uh, the, the biggest action star in the world. Um, but why we love him is because we want to have a beer with him. Um, he's very approachable and he's very charismatic and what you see is what you get. And, and that kind of honesty as a person um, really translate and it really translates well. And he knows his audience um, probably more than anyone I've ever worked with. And there's a lot to be said for that. The movies he chooses to do he chooses them very specifically, and he he knows he knows what he wants to do and what his audience expects of him. And I think that in itself is 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 thinking in a way that I have never approached as an actor. And and I am taking some pointers from that. Also, and just to wrap it up on a movie like this where you don't know exactly what it's going to look like in the end until you see it. Mm -hmm. You really need to trust your director. Yes. And Brad is a great leader. Uh, yeah, I think without... I had no idea. I mean, none of us did. Maybe Dwayne has a better idea than we do, um, being that he's done these kind of movies before. But when you're looking at a tennis ball or... I mean, luckily we had Jason, who played George, um, a lot of the time, and he's doing everything emotionally that George is doing. But he's still only only a six foot nine guy, and we're dealing with a forty foot gorilla or a, an alligator the size of a football field. And without Brad being able to show us the way, and what he did was the smartest thing I've ever seen anybody do or heard of anyone doing something like this. Because I would be like, what the hell is happening here? I mean, if we're talking about buildings falling down and monsters coming this way and that, he had every scene in this film that was a big sequence um, animated computerized on his iPad that he could show us um, so we knew what we it gave us a much better idea than looking at tape on a green screen because I knew what George was doing or what Lizzie was doing and and it was kind of meticulous in that way and so the preparation that Brad did it was phenomenal and we never would have been able to shoot this movie in 50 days without that. I mean, this movie would take anyone else six months to do, and then there'd be two years of post-production. We were shooting this less than a year ago. I mean, that to me, we did reshoots in December, and this movie is out now and looks amazing, and that's that's Brad and the, the visual effects guys are, are top-notch, the best in the business. If I'm going to do another movie like this, it's with all these guys.